Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the why is pump warm up important in some pumps. In some pumps you will see that before starting the standby pump we warm up that pump. Okay, for example your molten urea pump, okay, vacuum residue pump, ammonium carbamate pump etc. where the viscosity matters. Okay, when like if you will not warm up that pump what could be the causes there. Okay that we are going to discuss in this video and why we warm up that we will also discuss in this video. So let's start the video. So when we talk about that warm up, pump warm up, so it means that simply see, I am talking about the casing here. Okay, see this is my casing. Okay, so if I talk about the centrifugal pump, so in centrifugal pump, impeller is the heart of the centrifugal pump and the impeller is covered by the your casing okay so if you do not know about the what is the function of the casing what is the function of the impeller so that we have already covered in our centrifugal pump videos okay so you can simply check it out the centrifugal pump playlist so this is my casing right and if you see here is one scenario there is two pump okay this one and this one and the name of the pump is p 003 a and b and I am just assuming that my pump B is running, right? Now, due to schedule maintenance, we have to shift from pump B to pump A, okay? Means we have to do the changeover, okay? Now, before changeover, we have to do, in this particular pump, we have to do the warm-up. Means we have to warm up the, the suction line, discharge line and the pump casing, mainly this pump casing we have to warm up now if we will not warm up the pump so what could happen please understand that before we proceed so what happens if the pump casing is not warmed up so the first thing is that if you start the pump without improper or without proper warm up so it can lead to the thermal shock how the thermal shock so simply understand this point that is very very important if there is one uh, pump which is handling the higher temperature liquid okay and now that pump is at the standby okay this is a pump and this is the b pump this b pump was running and it was standby right so if this pump is standby obviously its temperature will be around or somehow approachable to the ambient condition okay until you do not have provided some additional features of the jacketing and all okay but what will happen that its temperature will be reduced okay now when you operate some pump so there is some criteria that or some operating parameters like the temperature will be within this range pressure will be this within this range flow will be within this range okay now if you do not warm up that fluid so what will happen that the casing will be cold okay and you will when you will send the higher temperature fluid obviously there will be the thermal shock because of the higher delta t i hope you got my point what i want to tell you okay the second thing is that for pumps handling highly viscous liquids for example your molten urea in the case of the molten urea which i have personally seen if you do not warm up the standby pump then your pump bearing can be damaged your pump ceiling can be damaged your pump casing can be damaged okay here are some more examples like your vacuum residue pump ammonium carbamate pump molten urea pump so where viscosity changes with temperature okay but when you are operating the pump you obviously want that your viscosity should be within the range with respect to temperature so for that what you will have to do you will have to achieve the temperature because your pump is standby that's why we also do the warm up of the pump so if you will do the inadequate warm up so what will happen that obviously your cavitation could be occur why because of the temperature difference I hope you are understanding my point what I want to say. If you want to understand about the cavitation and the science behind the cavitation, you can simply check it out our centrifugal pump playlist. I have deeply covered the cavitation topics. Okay, you will get to know more about the cavitation, 
what is the technical know how in the cavitation what is the like relation between the temperature and pressure vapor pressure and all right now if you do the insufficient warm up okay it can result material congealing as well as it could lead to the cavitation or lack of discharge flow how this lack of discharge flow we will discuss in our next slide where i will show you the graph as well see one thing also i want to tell you if you do not do the proper warm up what could happen that your bearing of the pump and ceiling could be damaged why it could be damaged see every pump has the special features every pump is every pump bearing and ceiling is designed for the some temperature and pressure okay some temperature and pressure so if you will operate that pump without warm up and it is already recommended by the vendors that you have to do the warm up before starting the standby pump if you if you do not do that what what can happen obviously your pump ceiling and bearing can be damaged okay now let's see this figure where simply see if you are handling the more viscous fluid okay more viscous means obviously here your viscosity is high okay so what will happen that the brake horsepower requirement will increase so simply see this black line means it is actual but when you are handling with the more viscous fluid so this one is your power okay see i am simply writing here p1 and p2 p2 this p2 was actual when you are running pump with the warm up condition but when you are not running the pump with warm up condition or inadequate warm up so this is the second condition when non warm up condition or with the highly viscous fluid as well okay first case is this okay the second case is the head generated is reduced okay see if the head generated is reduced so simply see here this is your head generated okay black one is actual and this dotted one is when you are handling the more viscous fluid so what will happen that when simply if the head will reduce the flow will reduce because this graph is between q versus h p and efficiency right so obviously your q will be reduced see earlier you were operating here now you are operating here so obviously your what will happen that your flow will be reduced okay fine flow means the capacity is reduced as well as the efficiency of the pump is reduced see simply when the head and capacity is reduced your efficiency will be also reduced and the best efficiency point will be moved okay what is the best efficiency point where like vendor recommend that you should run your pump at this point or nearby this point right so this will be also moved okay when we handle the highly viscous fluid and when we do not do the warm up as well you can say right so these these are the some points which can be happen if we do the inadequate warm up or if we do not do the warm up before starting the pump right and see simply if the cold fluid if you are handling the cold fluid so it will have the high viscosity right and if it will have the high viscosity for the pump it will be harder to operate efficiently okay when the pump will not operate efficiently so obviously your pump efficiency head flow will be reduced okay and now now the second question arises that how can we do that means how we can warm up the standby pump so see there are some provision the one provision that we could provide one line here as well for the pump casing okay second in some times i have seen that what we do we simply we bypass the nrv we bypass the nrv and from the running pump we simply warm up the casing ultimately in some cases we also do the steam jacketing to the pump so that your pump could be warm up okay mainly in the case of the molten urea okay in that case otherwise the choking problem could be occur so see there is there could be the different different method depends on the pump vendor 
okay the manufacturer of the pump how what is the provision they have provided but ultimately they will provide whether they will provide some external fluid okay it could be your warm up water okay it could be also the self fluid so it depends from manufacturer to manufacturer i hope you understood that how and why we do the pump warm up before starting the standby pump so that was the video about the pump warm up if you like this video if you learn something new from this video please subscribe our youtube channel also please suggest us that which type of the topic we can cover in our upcoming videos so that's all for the today's video thanks for watching keep learning thank you